Good morning. My name is Deton Adekoya. I lead performance and strategy for an energy organization here in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm also a pastor in the new Ikeja. And welcome to Audacity with PS. Good morning, good morning, good morning, the new, good morning, the world. You're welcome to another amazing edition of Audacity with PS. I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you are ready for Monday. I hope you are ready for the week. Your week has promises loaded in it. So let's go. Before we go ahead, I'd like to take this opportunity to really and deeply appreciate Pastor Shola Okodwa for this great opportunity. Audacity BPS is an opportunity to invest in our abilities to be productive, not only in church, but also in the marketplace. The world has a demand, a huge demand for productive people. You know, Bible actually says that a faithful man who can find, the world is looking for men who we can commit visions to and run with it and produce results season after season after season after season. That is the vision of Audacity with PS. And indeed, I want you to do what you can to help me appreciate Pastor Shala for initiating this opportunity to invest in us, invest in the world, so that we can have a world filled with faithful and great operational and great leaders. Please help me appreciate it. Put it in the comments. In fact, I'd like you to take it a step further. Go on his Instagram page, send him a DM. On his latest picture, just say thank you, PS, for audacity. Thank you, PS, for audacity. The second thing I'd like you to do this morning is to please share this link. We're going to be discussing and talking about some, some important topic and important truth this morning that affects every single human being. Whether you're the president of the United Nations or you're the leader of the United Nations or you're just simply a little young person who is in school, everybody undergoes what we are going to discuss this, this morning. So I'd like you to please share the link, put a link on your stories, put a link on Twitter, put it on everywhere and send it to specific people and just let them know this will help you this morning. Are we ready? I just wait for a few seconds and then we'll go ahead and begin to discuss the topic for today. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go. This morning, I have the privilege of discussing something that is very, very um, topical in the day and age in which we live, in the day and age in which we exist, the generation of time in which we exist. It's called burnout. Burnout. The World Health Organization actually defines burnout as a chronic syndrome that arises from work, intense workplace stress that has not been managed properly. Two key words stand out there, workplace stress and managed properly. Workplace stress, that means that it's not only work. I would like to say this actually, that it's not just work that gets you burnt out. There are certain projects that you handle, projects that are not limited to where you are exchanging value for money. There are personal projects. There are projects at, at, in your volunteer organization. There are projects in church. There are tasks that you're engaged in that just seem to sap a lot of energy more than the energy that you have. Then there's burnout. And then it talks about manage properly. So let's talk about stress there. You know, um, in material science, when um, organizations that manufacture things, they want to stress test a particular material or stress test food or stress test um, anything that they have produced, they put it under intense conditions. They put it under conditions that make the best out of it to come out. They stretch them and put them under a lot of pressure, intense pressure. And then after they've tested it and they've certified the limits, they stamp it and say, do not operate beyond so-so and so temperature. Do not operate beyond so-so and so pressure. Do not operate under certain conditions. I'm sure some of us have seen drugs or food where you say, um, best before. That means they've stress tested that food or whatever that material is and they've checked this is the limit within which it can operate maximally. Burnout is when you're operating outside of the region where you can operate maximally. That's the best definition. Burnout is when you're operating or producing outside of the conditions that help you to produce the best results. That's what burnout is. If you look at the word burnout, um, and the second word, managed properly. 
Managed properly means that burnout is inevitable. Or if it's managed properly, it is evitable. I'd like to say that again. Burnout is inevitable. Or if it's managed properly, it can actually be avoided. So let's look at the word burnout. When you hear the word burn, what comes to mind? It's fire. And something that burns out and a workplace burning out is manifested in three major symptoms. Number one. Number one is a lack of energy. What that means is like fuel in the tank. You want to get to a long distance. And all you have is a quarter of a tank. It's obvious that you're not going to get there because the fuel is going to get burned out. Fuel is something that is put in your tank that is consumed to propel your vehicle going forward. The same way a car needs fuel, do you know that you need fuel to get things done? Lack of energy. The second symptom in burnout is an emotional disconnection to the task or project that you're about to encounter or the task or project that you're about to embark upon. When there's an emotional disconnect because of lack of energy, you just feel like you cannot put in your best anymore. An emotional disconnection can come, I like to address this, sometimes it's as a result of the actual work is just too much. And in your heart and in your mind, you know, boy, I can't get this done. I'm just going to do whatever it is that I can. Sometimes the next, the, another symptom of an emotional disconnection is maybe you're actually upset or offended by something in that organization or that team or that group where you're contributing your value in. You're upset about something, you're not happy, there are certain things that have not been put in place, you were promised certain things and they were not put in place. your ability to produce results. And at the end of the day, after a lack of energy or an emotional disconnect, the final symptom is a reduced efficiency or a lack of efficiency in getting things done. You know, efficiency talks about executing tasks within a certain frame of time. That's what efficiency talks about. Excellence talks about doing it well. Efficiency talks about doing it well at the right time. It's not enough for you to execute the elections of the Nigerian, um, Nigerian country in two weeks. You must do it within the right frame of time. That's what efficiency is. I'm not going to talk about excellence. We know what we have uh, with the latest elections. But that's just uh, a, a, a clear description of what happens when there's a burnout. Number one, there's a lack of energy. Number two is there's a lack of emotional connection to the task or the project that you have in front of you. And then finally, what happens is you begin to see you begin to see that you cannot produce efficiently. So in describing burnouts, I like to use an obvious analogy that um, can help us to really drive this hole. For fire to exist, um, scientists tell us there are three things that must come together. It's actually called the fire triangle. Number one is fuel. In other words, if you're going to burn anything, you're going to need fuel. Have you ever had paper, pieces of paper that you didn't need anymore. And then when we we're younger, um, you just take a bit of kerosene, you light it up. And then what happens is you put kerosene on the piece of paper and then it's burnt up and all you have left is ashes. You need fuel. Without the presence of fuel, there can be no fire. There can absolutely be no fire. For fire to also exist, another important element that is required is heat. When you strike a match, what you actually have on the top of that match, at the top of it is an element that burns very quickly. At the base of it is wood that can also continue to burn. But then when you strike it against the match box, what you are doing is you are generating heat by that friction. You are generating heat by that coming together of two things. I'm going to describe what these things mean as we go on and discuss burnout and how to avoid it. And then, of course, a third thing that is required for fire to actually exist is an actual element that we actually breathe in that helps us in our bodies. It is what helps our bodies to actually burn the carbs that we take, the nice donuts and sandwiches and whatever sources of carbs that you take, right? It's oxygen. That means that if I take away oxygen, I take away the right environment, I take it away, I'm not going to get fire. 
I can have two of these things, but if I don't have the third one, I'm not going to get fire. There's no fire without fuel. There's no fire without heat. And there's no fire without oxygen. Oxygen is something that is everywhere and it describes the environment. Fuel is something that is required in a, in a um, quantifiable quantity, in a specific quantity per time for it to burn. And then of course, heat is a coming together of several things that generate some level of energy. Let's talk about the first one. Let's talk about fuel. Nothing fuels the desire to execute a task like a connection with the grand vision of that thing. Have you ever been fired up when somebody cast a vision to you? Everybody, almost everybody who has gone to school or has a fair knowledge of what has happened in the world history has always heard of Martin Luther King's great speech, I have a dream. Some of us can even quote it from beginning to the end. He talked about how that he had a dream where people will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. He talked about his dream where he had gone to the mountaintop and he had seen the other side. And he fired up a whole generation to fight and break to a standstill the racism and the discrimination that they were facing in the United States in the 1960s. That's the power of a vision. In fact, we've seen movies where people began to take a walk. People began to take a stand. People began to stand up to oppression because they were fired by a vision. Not money, not power, not fame, nothing. They just heard a vision and they were simply fired up by it. Vision is the fuel that runs the execution of any project. A connection to the grand vision of any project will keep the people pumping, 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 pumping. In fact, we see in scripture, it says, when there's a lack of vision, the people cast off restraints. What that means is what they are doing to guide themselves towards getting that vision, when they don't see it anymore, they begin to disconnect. There is a disconnect. So I have learned in my life to at several intervals to reconnect with the owner of the vision of whatever it is that I'm getting involved in, whether it's in church or it's in the workplace. The custodians of those visions sometimes may not be the original owner. Sometimes the custodians are those who have taken that vision and personalized and internalized it. In other words, for you to avoid burnout, one thing or some things that you must consistently do is to do what you can to get familiar again and again and again and again with the vision of the house or the vision of the organization. Where is that team going to? And how do you know when you have gotten there? Sometimes the achievement of the little steps is what the fuel and the energy you need for the next season and the next phase of that vision. You are burnt out when you can't see where you are going. You are burnt out when you can't. You don't have the internal energy as a result of insight into where you are going. Nothing powers a vision. Nothing powers an organization like a consistent and continuous encounter, a continuous and consistent exposure with the grand vision of that organization. Vision, very powerful. You know, sometimes when I'm when I'm uh, I'm just feeling low and I'm just feeling down, and I, in the order in the organization that I that I work with, one thing that I do, I just go and start speaking to people who I see as custodians. Sometimes they are not in the division that I'm working with. I just want to know what exactly is happening there, what exactly is going on there, and then I have renewed hope about what can happen. I have renewed hope about where we are going as an organization. I have renewed hope about what we can do again. I take that energy and I go back to my workplace and I begin to see myself in the grand scheme of things, which is another part of vision. Sometimes what you need to do is to see what you are contributing, what you are adding is, and how it is adding value to the grand scheme of things. There is no great house that is built by just a house appearing. No, there are several contributions, block by block, brick by brick, layer by layer, cement upon cement, addition by addition, painting, fittings, and then we have all the things and then the great house is built. So I want to encourage you today, if you are feeling burnt out, 
reassess and reconnect with a vision for your life which is either through God or certain desires that you had growing up or the custodians of the vision that you are serving in. And then number three, see yourself, where and how you contribute to the great vision of wherever it is that you exist. I'd like to close this with um, a particular scripture. It says, write the vision, make it plain that it may run. Sometimes you just don't understand the vision. That's why you're not running with it. Once the vision can be implanted in your heart, once the vision can take root in your heart, whether it's a, it's a workplace organization, a volunteer organization, or in church, vision will continue to power you. It will continue to push you. You wake up and you see fresh opportunities for that vision to come to pass. Can you do that today? All right, now I'd like to talk about heat. Heat talks about um, what happens when two bodies come together. Have you remember that scripture where it says um, two are better than one and a threefold cord is not easily broken? It says, woe to him who is alone when it is hot. Because how will he, how, when it's cold rather, how is he going to be heated up? Heat happens when two people come together and are running with a vision. Let me say this to you. There is no heat when you are doing it alone. It's okay to have the vision implanted in your heart, but sometimes you need people to work with you. That is why um, the power of communities is something that has been maximized, but sometimes in the wrong place. We are yet to see where one single person defeated an army, of course, except in exceptional cases, like the same scripture in the case of Samson. But the normal thing that we see is an army is usually, divide, is def usually defeated by a group of people. Why? Because when one is down, another can help him up. When one is feeling low, another can help him up. Bible says that iron sharpens iron. When iron, when two metals come together, what you have is sparks of energy, sparks of light. You enter into certain conversations with certain people and you leave there feeling energized. But you know the same way that it can work in the right way, it can actually work in the wrong way. Because you actually leave certain conversations and what has happened is an absolute drain of your energy. There's something that I practice in my workplace. Listen, let me say this here. There is no organization that, that is perfect. Even Jesus, amongst 12, he had one Judas. It was not a totally perfect organization. So what that means is your expectations of perfection may be actually unfounded. Your expectation of perfection from your organization may actually be unfounded. So what do you need to do? That's something that I practice in my organization. I am very, very careful of the conversations that I get myself into. Sometimes I get into conversations to help me get back on my feet. Sometimes once I hear a conversation getting into a direction where we are speaking against the organization or we are speaking against the custodians or the leaders of the organization, I simply excuse myself because I am preserving. And there are some conversations, there are some conversations that I just do what I can to just excuse myself strategically. Why? Because I need to preserve my energy levels in that organization. Sometimes at work, you are not productive just because of what you're going to get at the end of the month. You are productive because of your future. You are productive because what it is that you are going to create and execute in your future. You are not always going to be in that place. You're not a tree. You're going to have movements, different phases, different dimensions, different expressions of you. And that organization that you are in may actually be a stepping stone. So I want to encourage you today, be very careful of the organizations and the, con and the conversations that you have in the organizations that you have. Why? Because that may be what is actually sapping your energy. Sometimes it may not even be from the expected people. It may be from unexpected people. You enter into conversations with the drivers who usually will talk about all the bad things that are happening. Or you enter into conversations with people who are disgruntled. You are not part of what caused their disgruntled. So why are you part of the, the, the opportunity for them to express that negative energy? Negative energy is actually real and it can affect your burnout. Sometimes you exit those conversations 
and you're about to get your work done and all you can see is just a negative experience and you're just wondering maybe one day i'm going to be like that person maybe one day i'm going to have made my own story like that person no you're chosen you're different your output is different your end is different so your results and your energy should be preserved heat is something that is very important so sometimes you need to consciously engage in conversations that help you up i like to see this here as well sometimes to avoid burnout what you need to do is to ask for help ask for help from a colleague ask for help from a friend ask for help from someone within the organization or outside of the organization you present the case or somebody above you who has had experience in those things and that can help you avoid burnout sometimes you are hitting your head against the wall that somebody has already hit himself against and has already succeeded in a 30-minute conversation you can save yourself two months and three months of project work that's how you need heat to help you avoid burnout there are three things that talk about the enabling environment sometimes you don't have tools there's nothing that you can use sometimes you're in front of a project and you are absolutely blank your emotions are going to be disconnected your energy to get it done is not going to exist sometimes you have absolutely no clue of what it is that you're about to execute or what you're about to change Sometimes, it's not just the absence of tools, you have tools, but you don't know how to use them. In other words, you are in front of a tree and all you have is a bread knife. <laughs> or what you have is a, uh, a saw. We, if you have a saw, you have a higher probability of cutting that tree. But what happens is going to take you a very long time. Or if you have an axe, you have a high probability of getting, cutting that tree. It's even going to take you a much longer time. But what about if you, all you have is actually a chainsaw? In 10 minutes, the tree is down. What was the difference in all these scenarios? One person did not have the right tools. One person had the right tools, but then the tools were not efficient enough or the tools were outdated. In some cases, what has happened is you don't have the right tools, like an ax, but instead of using the ax head, what you're using is the base of the ax to try to beat the tree to, co to come down. Plus that's, that's going to cause a burnout. You are going to continue to beat and punch and beat at thin air until that tree tells you I'm not coming down. Why? Because of the right enabling environment. I will invest in creating the right enabling environment for me to be efficient. Now to just run with a vision or run with a project without adding the right tools, the right enabling environment for me to be productive. Sometimes your enabling environment is time. What that means, what that means is that you need a particular amount of time to produce efficient work. But sometimes the organization is not willing to provide you enough time to get things done. You're going to have to ask for time. No, I think to get something good done, I'm going to need some extra time. Can you give me so and so time? And you bring forth your strong reasons so that you don't avoid, you can avoid a burnout. A burnout can actually be avoided if you have the right tools to get things done. At the workplace, a lot of people have tools, but some people know how to use those tools much better than the others. So I'd like you to do some research today. In the way and the work that you're executing and you're doing, is there a new way to get it done? Are there modern ways to get it done? Are there new technology that is available to enable you to get it done? In the olden days, men were, were praised for their physical exertion, their physical ability to get things done by their strength and their abilities. But in the modern times, men are praised for how they have used their mind to create an enabling environment to get things done. Tools will always aid you. That is why productivity in farming and agriculture is going to be different in the, oh, in the new world, in the third world, and in the first world. Why? Because in the first world, what we see is an exertion of using tools and machinery and able to provide as much more produce and yield from the same amount of land. But in the third world, there's still a lot of physical exertion and the use of human strength. When you're supposed to channel that energy to your mind and ask yourself important questions like, how can this be better? I have used two hours to get this done. I have used four hours to get this done. Can this be done in 30 minutes? And you go and find out and you search out because you need tools, tools 
goals will always enable you. Remember when Moses was about to go, go back to Egypt, God asked him, what is in your hand? Sometimes you have to ask yourself that question. With this role and with this task that I'm about to execute, what am I exposed to? What is in my hand? How can I get this done? What are the tools and the environment that I need to work? I hope you know that somebody that is sitting down to get certain things done and to think and to develop strategy is going to get it done faster and better with a nice environment than somebody who is inside a bus where there's noise on this side, where there's the wrong odors on the other side that are just hitting and interfering with your thought process. Those things are enabling environments that help you to get your vision done. So I'd like you to encourage yourself. I'd like you to look at today and do an assessment. Are there better things that can help me to get this thing done faster, quicker, and more efficient? That's what it is about these three things today. So I'd like to wrap this up by reminding us that burnout is very avoidable. Number one, nothing powers you up like getting acquainted or really knowing and seeing yourself in the vision of whatever it is that you're executing, the grand vision, the big vision, the big picture. Leaders always have big picture in their mind, big picture thinking. So if you're going to make a difference, keep the big picture in front of you. Keep writing it down. Sometimes you pause and ask yourself and recalibrate, where exactly am I going? How is this thing, this task that I'm executing right now, how is it helping me to get there? In the vision of this organization, the things that I'm doing, what impact do they have on the visions on this organization? What that means is my actions or inactions, do they have an impact? If you feel like your actions have no impact, then you just put it out. Then you just put it out. So with a vision, it continues to power you on. Number two is people. People, very important. You always need people. The right team will always get the right results. The right team, because everybody is supplying their own uniqueness, their own empowerment, their own unique grace, their own unique thoughts, their own unique value to the team. A well-rounded team, people who can drive, people who can sustain, people who can help and take on responsibilities and contribute their own quota is always going to help you to keep the heat of the organization and the heat for the vision to keep going on. And then number three is the right environment or the right tools to avoid a burnout. So you don't continue to expend a lot of energy. You don't continue to expend a lot of power and resources getting something done that with the right tool, it can save you four hours and five hours of getting things done. You can prepare ahead of time to ensure to avoid burnout. Sometimes you schedule your recalibration sessions. It can be 10 minutes, it can be 20 minutes, it can be some days, but no matter what it is, reschedule your recalibration sessions. Put the vision right in front of you. Make decisions where people is concerned and make decisions where tools are concerned. And I can assure you that you can ensure that you'll be providing efficient work, excellent work, and providing results and getting results no matter, the work, no matter what it is. Of course, to close this up, of course, we have our creed. It's something that God gave us as the new to continue to implant the vision in our hearts. Are you ready? Come on, let's take it together. As sure as God helps me, I will not give up. I will not cave in. I will not quit. I will not fail. I will not fear. I will not die until my job is done and victory is won. I am the new and I love this church if you love this church come on let's spread the word again about that city today if you were part of it and it blessed you please share it with somebody if you shared it with somebody ask the person what what the feedback was and let's have a good week a great week an amazing week ahead god bless you